Welcome back to what we're calling the CAM Recap Show. Uh, this is for a week ending December 18th, 2021. We are focusing on three stocks today. We have AMD, we have Click, and MDC. That's how we got CAM. K for Click, A for AMD, and M for MDC. So let's just get into it. We'll start with, we'll start with AMD, uh, the biggest of the bunch most news here uh, so we'll just go down the list we have uh, multiple articles to go over uh, so let's just dive into it uh, number one uh, AMD focuses on advancing computing graphics and visualization technologies as of early November its customer list is like an all-star team of tech we have Google Amazon Microsoft and now meta platforms our customers to AMD and that's why I like them so much they have these big companies very well known and if they're helping them grow their business AMD is likely to follow on the gaming front its Ryzen processors and Raiden graphics cards are providing desktop gamers with performance and visual delights and we'll touch on that in a little bit shortly here uh, they're coming out with a new chip to focus on increasing speed for machine learning and artificial intelligence and it aims to compete with up-and-comer Amphor Computing which has Oracle as a customer to serve cloud computing companies so once again AMD they work in a couple different uh, computing software type um, revenue streams and so this is just another one they're, they're going after machine learning aka artificial intelligence so they're, they're trying to get a new revenue stream here. They have strong growth in revenue and earnings has the stock price up 38% since October. So just in about two months, they're up 38%. Uh, once again, that's in the past though. We're looking more towards forward thinking here. Uh, helped along by anticipation of AMD completing its acquisition of Zilinix. Zilinix, I'm not sure how to say that. I'll look into it in the near future. And of course, Reddit's, I guess, talking about it. Uh, I can tell you right now, just looking ahead, uh, since this video is being posted on a little bit of a lag here, uh, that deal with uh, Linux is currently been delayed. It was estimated that it would get done by year end 2021, uh, but it's currently been pushed back to early 2022. So we'll see how that shakes out in terms of stock price for both AMD and Linux. Uh, Intel share of global so Intel that's one of their main competitors uh, AM, one of AMD's main competitors Intel share of global x86 CPU market fell from 77 to 62 percent and brilliantly AMD share rose from 22 to 37 percent so there's a direct competition here in that uh, revenue stream of theirs and it seems like AMD is gaining momentum while Intel is slipping. Another one is Intel's losses in the desktop and laptop markets were already disappointing, but its losses in data, but its losses in the data market center. Um, okay, not sure what happened there, but so that's connected. And then to follow up on that, Intel share of server market also fell from 98 to 91 percent. So clearly, Intel still has a very high competitive advantage in that server market. But you can see they they're slipping, and AMD share in that sector rose from one to eight. So they are gaining ground, albeit slowly. But if you think about just the percentages, they they 4x here in that year. So with most of those gains occurring earlier in the year, that pressure clearly indicates that AMD's EPYC chips are pulling big data center customers away from Intel's pricier Xeons. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Uh, on, on another news, AMD President and CEO Lisa Su will host its 2022 product premiere on January 4th. So that's a couple days from now. Dr. Sue will highlight innovations and solutions featuring upcoming AMD Ryzen processors and AMD Radon graphics. Uh, so there's, looking ahead, there's going to be some talks about AMD pulling out of uh, at least attending the live portion of this 
show that I believe they're talking about in this clip. They're still going to, you know, highlight innovations. It's just going to be strictly streaming as opposed to being in person and having that streaming section. Uh, next, we have bears are worried, and by bears I mean people that are uh, worried that this stock is overpriced. They're starting to talk about the risk of global chip shortage will morph into a global glut, meaning that there's more chips than needed. Uh, and to continue, or that demand along with end users in cloud computing, data centers, and gaming will wane, causing AMD's growth to slow. Uh, that's definitely something to consider. However, at this point, we are strictly focusing on 2022. Uh, this talk, in my opinion, is more so focused in a five-year time horizon, where as of now, we're just working on a one-year time horizon. And right now, everything looks like AMD is good to go for this year. Uh, there's high demand, which AMD has supply, so they're going to uh, definitely improve revenue, at least for this year. And as time passes, we'll adjust strategy as we go. Uh, given these two strengths, leadership product and consistent ex execution, AMD stands to continue growing faster than the overall chip market. That includes gaining more market share from rivals. It also includes benefiting from strong demand among key end user markets. Uh, just a snippet that I found from another article. Uh, so also what I like to do is if any investment companies, if I come across a article where an investment company either buys or sells AMD, that's, that's something worth note in my opinion just because those investment companies, uh, when they put in money, they're putting in millions of dollars as opposed to someone like me who's just putting in, you know, buying a, a share, maybe a couple shares here and there, you know, that's not going to affect AMD's price. But an investment company putting in millions of dollars or selling millions of dollars worth of stock, that could potentially boost the stock price. So I, I pointed out here, you can see we have uh, a handful of them that we're just string along. So uh, we have uh, one, two, three, Four, looks like four investment companies are buying more shares of AMD here. So we have this uh, Ibesco VI Main Street. They bought uh, AMD. We have Woodli Woodcliffe Lake in New Jersey, a strategy asset managers LLC. They bought into AMD. Investment company Catalyst Pivotal Growth Fund. They bought into AMD. Uh, here's one that actually sold out of AMD. Investment company Van Eck sold AMD. Uh, once again, as far as I know, there's a distinction between that. They they did sell, but I I think there's also they would they would more clearly state if they sold out of it like completely. So the fact that they sold some, maybe that just means they're taking gains uh, as compared to like I said, selling out completely of the stock. So they still believe in it. I just think it's year end, so they're taking some gains there. Uh, another investment company, large company growth portfolio, bought some AMD. Here's a note, Key Bank was most optimistic about AMD, whose chips largely power Microsoft's Azure. So once again, that's just a good connection for AMD. That's why I like them, that they're working with these bigger companies. They're, they're supplying these bigger companies, so that's why I like AMD. Uh, the growing cloud of a seven nanometer product in the data center vertical driven by work from home and online learning trends is a key catalyst. So once again, working from home, that's that was a big component to AMD's success over this past year. And while people are beginning to kind of shift back into working in the office, there's still a lot of people still working from home. So this is clearly going to be something that stays around for many years to come. So no, no worries there. And as they mentioned, this is a key catalyst for them. So good news there. Here's another investment company, Wisconsin Capital Funds. They bought into AMD too. Once again, the importance of pointing those out is those funds are all dropping potentially millions of dollars, minimum hundreds of thousands. Here's another thing, uh, Chief Technology Officer of the company, Mark Papermaster. He sold 60,000 or roughly $8.1 million of shares in the company. Once again, that's sort of like the CFO in last week's recap. Uh, I have to believe that this is just uh, 
taking profits to, from year end, uh, whether it's to pay off their uh, tax bill or what have you. You know, this this is just normal. This is par for the course, in my opinion. But as we continue to follow this stock, we'll we'll see how that shapes out. Uh, continuing it along, we have a few more. AMD is now developing a five nanometer chip in scale. So the circuit widths on chips are measured in nanometers, which are one billionth of a meter. And so AMD is focusing on shrinking them. I believe their competitor Intel is at a 10 nanometer. I believe that's correct. While AMD is at seven. So they're ahead in size. And what's also interesting is even though the chips are getting smaller, they're actually becoming more powerful. So something to keep in mind there. Uh, chip Foundry Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing produces AMD's chips. So that could be a connection. If you're looking, if you're wondering what other companies can I look at that boost AMD, sort of like AMD's boosting Microsoft and uh, Amazon and Facebook, helping them do their business, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing, aka TSM, is helping AMD boost their sales. So that's a connection that you could look into. Maybe we'll look into that later on in a, uh, a new recap show or, you know, right now we're just going through these stocks. Maybe we'll, we'll see how things develop over the coming weeks and months. Uh, AMD also supplies chips and major gaming consoles. So they have connections with Microsoft, which we know. Uh, along with that, Azure, they also supply chips for Xboxes as well as Sony's PlayStation. So once again, there's key connections there. The World Semiconductor Trade Statistics and a report released at the same time forecast that annual global sales of semiconductors were expected to grow at 8.8% in 2022, so growth in the industry, to exceed $600 billion in sales. Uh, we will look into what their sales are today. Maybe I can pull that up. Uh, let's look into their financials. As that loads, we'll go back. Uh, AMD has suffered a delay due delay in its uh, Linux merger and the shortage of chips. So I touched on that earlier. There's a deal where uh, Linux and AMD, AMD's buying Linux, and it should help AMD become a, it should push them forward in terms of revenue and uh, increase their efficiency in making chips. So this is a good merger for the company. Uh, they're both in the same industry. AMD's clearly, I want to say the third uh, most popular, most successful in that industry where Linux is down towards the bottom but they have innovation that AMD likes and so the merger should help AMD push closer to second and just push them up faster as opposed to you know trudging through uh, the day-to-day -day, uh, grind slowly getting up there this should give them a nice boost uh, and then the last thing for AMD AMD recently made a big move by expanding its partnership with Tesla we touched on this last week Tesla's Model X and Model S cars will have AMD chips in their infotainment centers. The vehicles will be equipped with a semi-custom chip comprising of Ryzen embedded processing unit and a graphics card based on the RDNA2 architecture. So a lot of, pro a lot of good partnerships with AMD with other big companies. Let's shift back to AMD's financials. Let's see what their sales were. Uh, so it looks like for this year, they had about 14, 14 billion, close, we'll just round up to $15 billion in sales. And going back here, uh, $600 billion. So if we just do, I'm going to do a quick calculation here. So 15 divided by 600, that's 2%. So AMD apparently is only taking up 2%. I don't know if that's, if I'm doing this right, but if AMD is only taking up 2% of this 600 billion, uh, there's a lot of room to grow. And that's another reason why I like AMD. Uh, moving on to Click. So Click News, uh, the CFO for Click, uh, Lester Wong also sold 30,000 shares or approximately $2 million out of Click stock in the end of uh, 2021 
once again, similar to AMD and news with Tesla and just other companies around the nation, it's year end. I think people are just taking profits to take off uh, from the tax bill or what have you. So this is just another one of those. Uh, something promising here, an investment company, small company growth portfolio bought into Click recently. Uh, Click, a leader, they're a leader in wire bonding machines in the advanced packaging industry. Uh, so just a little background there. Click is cultivating new businesses such as a new advanced packaging tech techniques as well as mini and micro LED equipment. So they're trying to branch out into different revenue streams. So another reason why I like the company, they're showing innovation. They're showing that they want to continue to grow, not just in their market, but they're trying to expand into other markets. We'll see how that pans out. Uh, the last one is they They've shipped their first Luminex system for advanced LED solutions in September. So this isn't uh, super new news, but it is fairly recent. You know, this last quarter of uh, 2021. And management sees mini and micro LED technology production growing at a 55% annualized rate through 2025. So we'll have to dig into how much that's currently making uh, once clicks uh, 2021 uh, year-end financials come out we'll have to dig into uh, what does that revenue stream make at this point and then we can monitor is it really growing at that fast of a rate and if it's uh, profitable today we can then just expand it over say one to two years just to get us an idea of oh how much can we expect from that revenue stream uh, and this also is tying into metaverse so very popular again so click isn't trying to get in with Facebook or the metaverse as it ramps up over time uh, it's possible advanced display solutions could grow even faster making click a bargain price metaverse stock today we'll see how the connection kind of pans out there uh, and then finally we have MDC MDC had an article uh, published this week uh, Richmond American Homes of Florida, a subsidiary of MDC, is pleased to announce that its new community in St. John's County, Elm Creek at Silver Leaf, is now open for sale. So uh, they're a home building company. They've recently had a development. A new community has been built and is ready for sale. So we should see an influx of revenue come in in the near future. Uh, so. At this point, I want to do a very brief version of the technical analysis uh, just to kind of get a feel of how that works, how that goes over. So we'll start with AMD. Uh, if it pops up here. Uh, so AMD, we'll just look at the past month. Uh, once again, we're on a little bit of a lag here. And so I'm trying to catch up as quickly as possible. Uh, so right now we were at week ending December 18th, which puts us right around a $135 mark for AMD at the time. And that would have been an excellent time to buy, in my opinion, uh, especially, of course, hindsight's 2020. So looking ahead, it's currently at 143. So that shows, at least in the short term, that would have been a great time to buy. If we break out this chart, a little bit more and I'll, I'll expand this a little bit if we break out this chart a little bit more uh, at the time so we were right around here in this 135 range at the time you know it easily could have slipped back to say 120 it looked like we had a little bit of a consolidation if you can even call it that for a week in this 120 range but truly I mean it easily could have went back all the way down to that 100, 110 range. It looks like there's some consolidation here in the August and September range. So the fact that it pulled back a little bit, uh, that was par for the course. It does look like it's consolidating here in that 130 to 150 range. I would even maybe say 135 to 145 range. It looks like it's consolidating here. Maybe that's just uh, a good time to kind of get a nice position going as it boosts forward going into the future. Uh, so for click, uh, looking at them, the one month period, so we were at December 18th, so that's right around here. So they're 
They were about 56. They're currently trading at $60 today. Uh, so it has grown a little bit. You can see even just recently it did pop up above 70. So that I'm not 100% sure of what caused the pop at that time. Uh, maybe just people saw it was very undervalued. Um, I'll have to, we can look into that later. But there was a pop, so if you had some, that actually would have been a good time to sell. I'm not sure why they exploded like that, but uh, there must have been a real big push in small caps. They must have been one of the frontliners, and but the stock came back down to a more conservative $60. So if we look at the one-year chart, you can see they are steadily growing. They do have the ups and downs, normal flow here, but overall for the year they have grown. Uh, it seems like they do have very good consolidation at this $55 mark. And so that would be a good time to buy anytime it gets to around 55. Uh, that's a good time to buy. Currently 60, we know it can grow more than that. 60 right now, uh, that seems like it's normally at a, a peak level. Uh, so it's not a bad deal at this time, but it seems like there's normally a better time to buy. So just be aware of that. Otherwise, I think this is still a fair deal at $60. And MDC uh, for the one month, we'll start there. Uh, so the recap was for December 18th, which was around like $53, round up to 54. And right now we're at 55, uh, close to 56. Uh, it looks like, you know, the stock hasn't moved all that much in this past month. Uh, so just at a brief chance, uh, that seems like it would be a fair deal. Over the course of the year, it does look like if you wanted to find a buying opportunity, right around that $50 mark, so there's a lot of consolidation there. Uh, once again, this is small cap, so there's not going to be these high influxes, but if you do get an investment company on board with this company that drops you know, a couple million dollars, I mean, that could really boost the stock. Not sure if it will happen or ever happen. So all in all, this one, it has dividends, so you have to keep that in mind. It has high EPS. Uh, if we break this out over five years, you can see there is steady growth, but it, it takes a, a long time, a long time for this one. So this one's more focused on the dividend play. So just be aware of that. Um, but that's, that's pretty much going to wrap this one up. Uh, we'll close out on AMD here. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed the show. Please like, subscribe. Uh, leave comments, suggestions on what we can do for next week. But I hope you enjoyed the show, and I will see you next week. Bye.